Hello. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing today? Um, I hear we've got some some varying weather in the chat, so keep the chat going. That'd be great. So whilst we um, get started, I'd love you to answer a question for me. And that is, um, what is the one thing that you'd really love your supervisors to be able to do that they're not doing already? So have a think, and then let's get that in the chat box. What is the one thing that you'd really love your supervisors to be able to do that they're not doing already? And whilst you're having a chat, I am going to just um, tell you what we're doing today. So today we're going to be exploring the six things that you do need your supervisors to be able to do. Now, I say really because, let's be honest, there are loads of different things that your supervisors could be able to do and loads of different skills and behaviours. And for the most part, this really does depend on your company. However, today I am going to be zoning in on the six things that I've witnessed and, and um, observed that if you've just focused on these things and supported them to, to develop these, these six skills, it would really reap a lot of rewards. So um, before I start, let me chat a bit about for those of you, how many of you have actually been on one of my webinars just out of interest? And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Oh, we've got we, loads of chats. So we've got, I'll just jump back to the chat and just say, so we've got difficult conversations with their people, give effective feedback, all of the above there, uh, managing the workload to allow more time, yeah. Yeah, listen. Yeah, manage staff effectively. Is, it, is there any more up there, Richard? Yeah, that's that's cool. brilliant. Yeah, come back down. Understand their role in our people policies and take ownership. Right, fantastic. So we're all on the same page. I just wanted to check that. So I am a coach, trainer, and writer, and I work with managers and leaders, which I've done for nearly 20 years now. I started my journey in retail where I did 12 years as a training manager. Um, for Asda and Morrisons, and then I started my own training consultancy, which has given me the pleasure of working in lots of different businesses and with a lot of managers at all levels of their career. So right from supervisors and team leaders, right the way up to board of directors and business owners, and it's something that I absolutely love to do. In fact, over the years, I've worked with hundreds of managers, helping them feel more confident and capable to manage their people effectively. And as I say, it's something I love because I'm really passionate about managers being the key players in any company because they have the power to really affect and influence people. They can motivate, inspire, develop, and although having soft skills doesn't always come naturally for some, I believe it can be learned, because that's what I do. I develop managers get the very best out of their teams and themselves. I do this by running a first-line manager program, which is aimed at team leaders, supervisors, and managers. I also run an ILM award for first-line managers through a coaching program, and I also run a one-to-one -one leadership development coaching program that's aimed at senior managers and directors, which is either face-to-face -face or on the phone. Now, as well as these programs, I run webinars like this one, and I have a weekly blog, and I've also in the process of launching my first book, which is going to be out in the next couple of weeks. I literally handed it to Richard as I walked through the door, so he's got... He's got a copy with he's got a first copy on it in his hand now. But if any of this interests you or you'd like to learn how I can help develop your managers, then do pop on over to barbaranixon.co.uk or just drop me an email. Now before I go on, I just want to let you know that my style is to support you without making you feel overwhelmed. So as we go along, look for that one gem that you can implement straight away. And then once you've done that, you can move on to the next. And I like to keep these webinars really interactive, as Richard said. So please feel free to jump into the chat box, help each other out, chat to me, um, answer some questions, and, and um, join in with the exercises that I've got planned. Please feel free to have fun. Um, and like I said, just ask me questions as we go along. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of managers at all levels, from supervisors up to business owners, because I personally believe that they hold the key to a successful business. So my second question to you is, why do you think that is? Why do I believe that managers and supervisors hold the key to a successful business? So if you ever think and stick that in the chat box, that would be great. Yeah, um, let's have a look and see what it is. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, because they empower their teams to achieve their potential. Yep. They should lead by example because they have the influence. Absolutely. Because they empower and motivate their staff. Because they deliver through their people. Because they're the people who can motivate staff to perform well. They're the closest to our people. Definitely. 
You're all absolutely right. They are the ones interacting with your teams. Without people, your business would just be four walls and nothing would get done. We all know that we need people, and those people are spending more time in your company than they are with their, their families. So as a result, they need to feel engaged, motivated, empowered, and like they're adding value, like they're making a difference, um, appreciated, and just generally happy. And your supervisors and first-line managers are the ones that can make this happen. They have the power, as you've all said in the chat, to make someone feel all of those things or the exact opposite. So has anyone had an experience of working with a manager who made them feel miserable? I don't need to know their names, but just has anyone done that, where they worked with a manager who made them feel miserable? And if so, how did it actually affect you? So again, just put that in the chat. That's, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it demotivated you. It demotivated you, undermined, undermined your confidence. Yeah. Um, you actually left the company um, as a result. You, you, yes, because it's the point that you didn't want to come to work. Yes, a couple of times. Um, you were considering leaving the business. Oh, this is um, lots of chat going on there. So, um Apologies if I'm missing your comment out because it's moving quite quickly. Um, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. It's 11 years ago. I've, um, yeah, it made you feel worthless. Yeah, as, absolutely. I hear you. I've been in the same situation where, uh, and we're going back a long time now, but where I hated Sundays as a result of, of Mondays following. So I can completely relate. So has anyone worked with a manager that, made them feel fantastic, so empowered, motivated, and, and engaged, and all the other brilliant words that we've already put down in the chat box earlier. Yes, we've got encouragement to develop. Yes, you've had lots of examples like that. Oh, I'm so pleased. That's great. Yes, you had regular communication. Yes, you wanted to do more for them. Absolutely. See, this is, it's, it's so lovely when you get to work with somebody who brings out the best in you. So just out of interest, would you work with that person again, the, the great manager? We've got yes, 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 brilliant. And, and that is how we want our teams to, to feel. We want them to feel like they would move heaven and earth for, for their supervisor because when they're doing that, they're more productive. Um, good supervisor and managers really do have the power to affect people and the business, as we've already shown just in the chat box, just in two minutes. And as a result, we need them to be at their best. Now, the issue here is that supervisors tend, and I am generalizing, tend to be brand new managers, very new at, at managing other people. Not always, like I say, I'm generalizing. So for, the, for, most, for some people, they might be at the start of their management journey. And because of that, we're actually expecting a lot from them. So throughout this webinar, I want to just take it down to six skills that actually, if they did only these things, would actually form a fantastic foundation for them and would also deliver results for your business. So the very first skill that your supervisor needs to be doing is under the banner of communication. Now, I say under the banner because we talk about communication, and it, but it is such a big thing as it's all-encompassing. And often when I'm working with managers and we talk about communication, we do tend to break it down because it's a, an umbrella term for lots of different things. So just out of interest, just um, to keep the chat going, can you just tell me what for you would fall under the banner of communication under your, in your business? And there will be loads of different things. So we've got feedback, yeah, being open and honest. Yeah, team meetings, being constructive. Yeah. Uh, One-to-ones, having expectations and feedback. Yes, absolutely. I've got things like um, listening, body language, written communication, briefing skills, um, which would fall under verbal communication, being able to ask questions. Now, I will say that there's so much more to communication than I've got time to go through in this webinar. And we did do a, a webinar on, on communication that's probably still on the site somewhere. Um, but the first two skills do come under communication as it's such an important skill. And the first one is listening. Now, I've chosen listening, and I think a few of you have got listening, yeah, on there too, because this is a skill that crosses lots of different tasks, from just going about the daily routine to doing return-to-work interviews, 
uh, performance management meetings. Um, keep going. That's it. And again, that's it. brilliant. Performance management meetings, um, interviewing, giving feedback, um, doing appraisals, the list is endless. So a supervisor that can demonstrate great listening, it really is off to a good start. My next question is, what are the business benefits for you in your business to supervisors being able to listen effectively? What are the business benefits to supervisors being able to listen effectively? But stop small problems escalating to big ones, definitely. Understanding real issues, understanding the needs of their team, feedback to the business, understanding what's going on on the ground. Yeah, all of those. Um, have I missed any? Uh, understand what needs... Oh, uh, give the right support at the right time. The team feels engaged. Oh, they're coming thick and fast now. Gaming, getting trust from their team, definitely. The benefits... There's just more than I can say. They can learn from their team. They can learn from other people. They understand the business and what's important at that time, and as a result, more able to confidently share that information. Their team is more likely to feel empowered, engaged, respected, and valued. Um, it costs absolutely nothing. They come across as a lot more professional, confident, capable, and in control, which in itself are great behaviors to role model. And if they're doing it, they're more likely to be passing on this skill to their team and the people around them. Now, the problem with listening is that it takes a lot of practice and people get busy. And what usually happens is we actually get used to listening whilst we're doing other things. So let me give you an example. And just say yes if you've done this. Um, and I'm going to say yes. Have you ever carried on working at your computer while someone's speaking to you who needs you for something? And you've said something like, it's all right, I'm listening. I'd keep talking whilst you're tapping away. Miming tapping away here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got yes, yes, yes. I'll just do my little uh, mime here on my own. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm sure we've all done that. Guilty, yes, yes. Oh, we've got a never. Oh, I'm really pleased. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to say never because I've done that. Yeah, we, we've both done that here. Uh, apart from one of us, you know, most of us have been there. We, cause what we've, ha we've done is we've adopted the habit of still working while someone's speaking to us, and we're trying to multitask our listening. But by doing that, we're not actually taking advantage of any of the benefits that we've already mentioned. So my quick tip here is to stop what you're doing, face the person that's speaking to you, make eye contact and focus on them. What I will say is that I know we're all busy people and I'm sure you're thinking that if you did that, every time someone interrupted you, you'd never get anything done. If you really don't have time to speak to somebody, simply be honest and give them a time to come back when they can have your full attention. So just some listening tips for you to encourage your supervisors um, to do. Um, I'll just come back to the chat, if that's all right, in a second. So just some listening tips for you to encourage your supervisors to do. Encourage them to make eye contact with the person that's speaking to, to them. Encourage them to really try and focus on what the other person's saying rather than thinking about what they want to say next. Ask them to think about their body language. So how are they stood or sat? Have they got a tendency to, to fiddle? And by that I mean, are they fiddling with a pen or clicking it? Are they tapping on the desk? Are they tapping on the keyboard? Are they messing about with their phone or even um, playing with their hair or stroking their beard? Um, ask them to try not to interrupt, even if they know what the other person is going to say and just wait for them to finish. So these are just tips that you can encourage your supervisors to do as you're working with them. Now, in, just in the chat box, I just want to, uh, to capture that. I really try to, try not to, but sometimes I need to finish the thought first. Do you mean finish the thought of what you're working on? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, is that what you mean? Yes, yeah. So, by all means, just... Uh, Oh, right, so you want, to, you want to park it and then listen to them. That's fine, just ask them to wait for a minute um, and finish what you're doing and then, then give them your full attention. So if you just, uh, what I found is if, as long as you say to them, yeah, just can you give me two minutes while I just finish that, people genuine, generally um, are quite receptive to that and will wait because um, they just appreciate the fact that you are going to give them your full attention um, in a moment. So the next aspect of communication, which is the second skill that I've chosen today, is briefing skills. 
Now, I've chosen briefing skills as it encompasses great verbal communication. Now, before I continue, can you just um, say yes in the chat box if you really could do with your supervisors being great at briefing the teams? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Oh, good, I'm glad. Right. So, now the benefit of being great at briefing um, yeah, I'm glancing up and up at the chat, sorry if I'm stopping. Uh, absolutely, it would be a godsend. I would like them to start briefing the team. Brilliant, so I hope this is, is beneficial for you because the benefit of being great at briefing your team is, is, again, so much. It improves communication. Everyone is aware what they need to do and why it's important. It reduces the risk of people jumping to conclusions, feeling left in the dark. It minimizes gossip and jungle drums and uh, um, people not understanding what's going on. So when everyone in the team is kept in the loop, it really increases um, the engagement. People feel motivated. It improves the sense of ownership. And when ownership is improved and people feel like bought in, they're more likely to feel like what they do matters and be more proactive in their decision making. In fact, the results are great. Just a quick note here is that when I speak to employees in, in different companies, one of the complaints that I hear is being kept in the dark and not knowing what's going on and this is such a quick thing to resolve simply by improving your communication strategy and a great way to do this is to have a daily briefing session where the team gather around for five minutes and then the supervisor just brings them up to date. Anyone brief um, have briefing sessions at the minute? I know we've got um, a couple of you have mentioned that you'd like to start but anyone yeah do it at the minute? Fantastic. So things that, um, when you're looking at briefing skills, there are three things really to focus on that you can encourage your supervisor um, to do. So number one, so they, they know exactly what they want to say. Number two, that they keep it brief. And number three, that they tailor it to who they're going to be speaking to. So with regards to knowing what they want to say, you can help your supervisors by just having the same agenda each time. So for example, you might cover what's important this week, what's important next week, any issues, celebrations, and questions, or AOB. Um, when it comes to keeping it brief, for a lot of people, this just takes practice and getting regular feedback. Most people are nervous to begin with. They might feel self-conscious, and they might feel like they're speaking too quietly, or they might even be quite monotone. But regular practice really does help. A top tip is to set um, an alarm on your phone or even a stopwatch for how long the briefing is going to take. So if it's five minutes, just stick it on your phone and stick to that. It's not meant to be war and peace, just top line information to keep everyone in the loop. And finally, think about what your team wants or needs to know and ask them questions throughout just to keep them engaged. You might also want to get other members of the team to cover different areas to mix it up a bit and keep it varied and interesting. Okay, um, any questions so far? I was just glancing at the chat box now. Some people already do that. We should do them, but they don't really happen. Okay, any any questions? If so, just keep it putting it in the chat box. So let's move on to skills number three, which is, and I think this is something that somebody mentioned right at the very beginning, which is giving feedback. Now, this is an area that a lot of managers and supervisors really struggle with and as a result they shy away from it and avoid it altogether. But the thing is that as a supervisor or manager giving feedback just comes with the territory and there are times when it's easier and better all round to nip something in the bud rather than sweep it under the carpet only for it to become a bigger issue later down the line. So I know a few of you have mentioned this already but does anyone find that their supervisors really need help giving feedback? And what is the result of that if they do? Got, yes, they avoid it. Yes, yes. Yes, what is the result of that? So if they are uh, they're struggling to give feedback, um, they should do but use excuses not to. They avoid anything which could be deemed negative or critical. Yeah, performance issues escalate. Ah, so you end up doing it. Yeah, it's the elephant in the room syndrome. Great. Um, a good way of supporting your team to give feedback is to go right back to basics and support them to, do, to just form feedback in terms of the feedback sandwich 
I'm sure you've all heard of that. It is great, it's simple, and it's really effective. It doesn't have to be a big deal, and it doesn't always have to be formal, as in both of the, the both parties sitting in a room. Sometimes the best feedback is just a two-minute conversation, maybe over a coffee or, or just informally. Um, and it doesn't have to be any more complicated than just positives, negatives, and positives. The other thing that you can try using is um, ALCS, which is ask them, how do you think this has gone? Because more often than not, the individual will be able to tell you exactly what's happened. So that makes the feedback a little bit easier. You can talk about what you liked about what they did. So I like the way that you did this and be specific. You can talk about your concerns. So my concern is that, and again, be specific and factual. And you can suggest things at the end. But it still follows the, the feedback sandwich, which is so simple, and it, and it does work, which is positive, what they did wrong, and the positive again. Um, I'll just, I'm just flicking back to the, the chat box. Um, they need support, but don't listen to the training you, you give and just want HR to do it. Yeah, uh, and we've got a lot of people completely unaware of their performance issues or development areas. Um, and lots of people who think they're more capable than they are. Okay, so this is a really simple way of, of supporting them just by asking them to do the feedback sandwich and encourage them every time they do that. Now, skill number four is connected to feedback and it is equally important, and that is praise. Now, praise is an incredibly powerful motivator and something that we all need whether we realize it or not. As a manager, what you say and think really matters and everyone wants to be noticed. Praising people and saying thank you for a job well done is a great way to do that. But when it comes to praise, there are usually two sticking points that I come across. And that is, number one, we're hardwired to look for mistakes and people doing things wrong. And number two is we don't feel genuine. We don't feel genuine. We feel disingenuous. I think that's the word, isn't it? Um, so anyone relate to these? So people don't give praise because they're hardwired to look for mistakes or they don't feel... Um, they feel disingenuous about it. So if I'll just wait for you to keep typing in the chat box. But if this is the case, um, firstly, try and look out for people doing amazing things. Now, I think Ken Blanchard said, start catching people doing things right. Now, this could be from going above and beyond um, to come into work and getting on with it all day without any fuss, um, to just doing your day-to-day. -day. And once you spot something, just say, well done. Say thank you. Say it and mean it. And when you do, it'll never come across as anything but genuine. And people will pick up on that, and it'll go such a long way. Um, we've got, it can come across as condescending if not done properly. Yeah, I think it, it can if um, it starts to become a habit. And we are still talking, we're talking about praise there, aren't we? That it can come across as condescending if not done properly. Just that I've not um, missed something further on. Yeah, fantastic. Yes, it, 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 it can do if it becomes a habit. So if people just say thank you by rote every single day, maybe at the end of the day. But if they start to... Um, Develop the habit of catching people doing great things or and not just looking for mistakes, um, then it starts to feel a little bit more genuine. And providing the person that's giving the praise feels genuine about it, it'll, it'll come across in the right way. Um, I, let me just capture the, um, the chat. Oh, what was the other feedback method? <clears throat> Excuse me. The other feedback method, I don't think it's on the slide actually, it was ALCS, and I'll put it on, um, are the slides going out, Richard? Yeah, yeah. so if the slide's going out, I'll, I'll amend that slide and I'll send that out so that um, you've got it there. But it's ask um, likes, concerns, and suggestions. Um, and this one, let me just, sorry, I'm just catching up on the chat. I think the sandwich can work in conversations that are not about a specific performance issue where it's really important that the individual understands the issue that's wrong and how it needs to be improved. Ending on a positive can give a mixed message. No, I completely agree with you. Um, 
So what I'm talking about is feedback so it's not, it doesn't um, snowball into something bigger. If it's a, a performance management issue where it's much more formal and you do need the other person to understand exactly what they've done wrong, absolutely. Um, so be, be as specific as you can. But if it's a day-to-day -day thing where you just want to nip things in the bud and it's just about encouraging people to start giving feedback rather than avoid it altogether. Does that capture that point? Brilliant. Um, right then. So we are now on skill number five, I think. Are we? Yes. And this is be proactive as well as reactive. Now, a quick question. Where do most of your supervisors fit um, on the scale? Are they mostly proactive or mostly reactive? Well, well, yeah, I'm very animated today with my, yeah, with my hands. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, are you more proactive or reactive? Yeah, mostly reactive, reactive. Yeah, a lot of supervisors do tend to sit more on the reactive side than proactive. And although that is still a great skill, because after all, you do want people to be able to think on their feet and just get on with things, it's also useful to have a healthy blend between the two. In order to encourage your supervisors to be more proactive, ensure they're fully kept in the loop with regards to your business and what's coming around the corner. It's really difficult, if not impossible, to be proactive without all the right information, as they'll just find themselves planning for things that just aren't important or relevant. So if you can, invite them to meetings, give them a briefing session, um, ensure they understand what's coming up around the corner in maybe the next three to six months, or even further afield, so 12 to 18 months if you can. You can also encourage them to come up with plans on how their team is going to tackle particular challenges or come up with solutions to particular problems rather than just getting information when it's a done deal. All of this will really help them to start stretching and learning to, to make being proactive a habit. And that's what you, you need to do with, with this is just start to encourage them to be more proactive so it does start to be a bit more of a habit so you're balancing the two out. Okay, so now we're on to the final skill, which um, I've chosen to empower. So why do you think this is important? I'll keep talking whilst you're, yeah, staff feel trusted. Yeah, it gives them a sense of ownership and direction. They feel confident and trusted. It builds capability, resilience, and responsibility. It increases their confidence in leading their teams, definitely. So being able to empower a team is so important. It sends the message that their team are trusted, that they're valued, and that they are more than capable to do their job. And not only that, it prevents micromanaging habits to creep in. As well as this, it allows the supervisor more time to focus on other tasks tasks that, that really do need their attention rather than just managing their team all the time. You're absolutely right. It, it treats them as adults. The problem here is that empowering um, people does take time because it involves building up trust. And to be able to trust, you first need to get to know people. And your supervisor needs to really get to know their team and allow their team to get to know them. Trust doesn't just happen overnight. It takes a while to build up, as we all know, but there are things that they can do to speed up the process. For example, they can chat to their team, share information about their life in terms of uh, their career and how they've got there, and remember details about theirs, deliver on their promises, behave in a consistent manner, have regular one-to-ones, and all of that will really help to build up trust. And then, obviously, the next step is to show that, that they tr they, you trust them by empowering them. So once someone knows how to do something, empower them to do it without checking up on them. So you can delegate tasks, develop people, coach them, and really help the team grow, all of which will help make their team feel empowered and, as a result, much more engaged. So these are the top six skills that supervisors should know that I've observed are actually really important. And just to recap, we've got listening, briefing skills, giving feedback, giving praise, being proactive as well as reactive and empowering their team. I would love to hear any questions or thoughts that you've got. Um, please feel free to put them in the chat box uh, and I'll go through them and answer them as and when they come up. And I would love to know what your main learning point is. So what is it that you want to go away and implement or really focus on for your supervisors?
And whilst you're having a think, um, I'll just let you know that you can also connect with me outside of here by, I don't know, if you're on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, um, on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook as well, um, or over on barbaranixon.co.uk. And they can show, follow me on the Shorebird website. website, yes, which is, if you've not checked it out, go and check that out, that's fantastic. So any questions before I hand over back to Richard? If not, just, oh, right, here we go. Uh, work on the praise elements. Um, our managers really need to learn how to do this properly. Yeah. Start regular supervisor briefings. Yeah. What is your new book? Well, uh, it's, it's in front of me, actually. Um, it's called The Boss Hat, and it is coming out next week. And I'd love to show you a picture. I'll show you... Um, I'll put, I have to put a picture on my website, so if you want to pop on over there, um, you can see it there. I've got the proof in front of me um, with Richard so at the minute. So, yeah, it's a management workbook, so it's all about helping you become the leader you were always meant to be. Why have you not covered praise under feedback? I wanted to keep it separate. It's a good, it's a really valid point, and I did think about that. Um, I wanted to keep it separate because I wanted um, to show a lot of the times, praise can be quite difficult to do in its own right. Um, and whilst I absolutely agree that feedback doesn't always have to be negative, that it can be um, positive as well, I just wanted to cover them both separately, So, because I do know that a lot of supervisors do struggle with constructive feedback. So that was the reason for that one. Um, feedback skills are a priority for you. Your other learning was less about the content and more about the idea of you using webinars and conference calls. Brilliant. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. If you want any help with that, um, just let us know. Um, I think that covers everything. So thank you very much. I've really enjoyed my time with you and have a fantastic day.